So if you've saw the other part, you may have noticed I accidentally forgot the very last question, which is 31. Probably because that honor thing is like a question and I saw 30 and I thought I was done and I was very tired, but here's 31 and here's how you know it's still a liquid. So this question says the specific heat capacity of water um, is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. That's the C in Q equals MC delta T. This equation says that the heat is equal to the mass times the, the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. Now this question is a little tricky because you are given the specific heat capacity, of course, so that's going to be here. And you are given the mass of water in grams, which is what it should be in this case. And you are also given the amount of heat that is added to the water. It's not in joules. It should be in joules. Notice how your units are in joules here. That's easy, though. That's just 5,000 joules. But we are given only one temperature. So there's no change in temperature, apparently, if we only see one temperature. But that's kind of the point because we want to know what is this water temperature going to end up to be? Is it going to end up in the beyond boiling, like over 100 degrees Celsius? Is it going to remain a liquid? What's going on? So 10 degrees Celsius tells me that that's liquid water. So currently we have liquid water. And as a reminder, water has a range of from zero degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. It's a liquid during this temperature time. Beyond 100, it's a gas, so you would say that's vaporized, and then under zero, it's a liquid. Oops, liquid, or not liquid, I'm not thinking straight. Um, ice, so it's a solid. Now, boiling means it gets to 100, because when something is boiling, it is 100 degrees Celsius until all of it is completely vaporized, in which case the temperature can go beyond 100. So we are looking for the fact that Q equals MC delta T. We want to find the final temperature. As a reminder, change in temperature is equal to T2 minus T1, which is final minus initial. So we can do a little bit of substitution, and we get this. Q is equal to MC T2 minus T1. And we want to solve for the final temperature. We really want to know how hot does this water get if you add this much energy to this mass of water. That's an easy thing for us to do. Mathematically, we rearrange it. First step, we divide both sides by MC. We get T2 minus T1 is equal to Q over MC. Then, of course, we're going to add T1 to both sides. So to do that, I'm going to move this over. T1 is going to come over here. And now it's added. Beautiful. And you just plug everything in. 5,000 joules. Let's do some units here divided by the mass, which is 15.5 grams, divided, uh, then also we have C in the denominator, which is 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. We're adding to that the 10 degrees. We don't need to turn it into Kelvin because we're talking about a difference in temperature. Check out our numbers here. And I'll do it with you because there's no... So this is a question where you have to do math to see what the answer is, but the answer is qualitative. So we have 5,000 divided by the product of 15.5 and 4.184. Add 10. So my temperature is going to be 87.1. I'm going to move this. I got 87.1 degrees Celsius. That's my final temperature. What that tells me is that this water certainly gained some heat and went from 10 degrees Celsius to 87.1 degrees Celsius, but it did not hit its boiling point. It went from around here to like here or something like that. So it stayed a liquid. It just is a hotter liquid. So that's why the answer is still a liquid.